Uh, hey guys, Brooke Potter here. Uh, I do apologize, haven't put a video out in quite a while. It's been a very hectic uh, couple weeks. Um, I'm not really going to get into that, but I thought it'll be fun to put some quick content out. Um, for those of you who don't know, my name is Brooke Potter, originally from the twin island nation of Trinidad and Tobago. In uh, late 2016, I moved out to the United Kingdom, started off in the south of England in Ashford, Kent, and eventually I moved up into London, and uh, I subsequently moved since then up into Essex. And I thought it'd be fun, uh, seeing as coming from a Caribbean perspective, f to list five things that I absolutely loved about living in London, and um, I thought it'll be a, a fun rundown uh, just to share a bit of those experiences. So the first thing that I absolutely love and also hate about living in London is the events that are taking place in the city. Uh, London is one of the greatest cities in the world uh, for events. All of the things that I've ever wanted to see, every band I've ever wanted to see, every uh, concert that I couldn't get back in Trinidad and Tobago, we didn't get a lot of concerts, uh, happen quite regularly out here. Things like Phil Collins, uh, Andre Bocelli, uh, you know, the theater, the opera, you know, Les Miserables. And so on and so on. So I'm a big fan of all these things. Uh, not to mention there's a very uh, community feel, especially amongst the expats. Uh, anybody who's been following my videos knows I've been involved with intonations and, and, and met up at a couple of these new meetups once a month. Uh, new people who move to the city, they go out for drinks and we, we get to meet a lot of people. So... Uh, there's always something going on, lots of great venues, lots of great parties. The reason I hate it is because if I stayed there, I would just spend all my money, right? I would just go broke uh, doing tours, doing, you know, uh, concerts, uh, events, theater, you name it. I, I would literally go, go broke. So I'm kind of glad I moved out of out of that arena. Uh, the second thing I really enjoy about the, the city of London uh, well, it's London, and then there is the city of London, but I'll get to that in a minute, is the organic nature of the city. Um, unlike New York or some other cities that have been planned and, you know, it's all grids and structures, London is a more organic city. It wasn't planned. It just kind of grew up uh, around uh, basically what the founding of Westminster and around the city of London, and it's just kind of expanded since then. So, not everything is on a grid. Uh, you know, you could be walking down one road and there's these wonderful little alleys and there's little pubs and shops in between and the roads crisscross. And it, I mean, it's very confusing. I particularly wouldn't want to drive in London, but uh, I do love that feel because you really don't know what you're going to find where. Uh, and there are all these little hidden little places and gems, uh, some great food places, some great cafes, uh, you know, odd shops and other types of things uh, are very Art Deco. Uh, very, it's just a great place to walk around. Um, so it's a, it's a contemporary mix between the old and the new. There are some very modern buildings in the city and and elsewhere, and you couple that with some very old uh, buildings that are out there, and I, I love it. it. It's it's very organic. Uh, yeah, it, it just has a very human feel to it, and I love just walking around the city. Every time I go into London, I just I just get charged up. And I, I would walk around. I'd just walk around for hours just looking at everything. And um, yeah, that, that was, that's definitely something I enjoy. The next thing that I really enjoy, uh, as I've mentioned already, is the age of the city. It is so old and so ancient. Uh, Trinidad and Tobago, while it is, is in comparison a very new country, um, you know, there's nothing out there that's really, a, a, you know, more than a couple hundred years old. Um, in terms of, of city and these types of things. But there are places out here that, you know, are literally thousands of years old. Well, not thousands, but 8,000 years old, possibly more. Um, in terms of, you know, as, as I've mentioned before, there is the city of London, which is different from the city called London. So when people think of London, they think of, you know, the city called London. But within that is something called the Square Mile, which is the city of London. And these are actually two different jurisdictions. I believe um, CGP Grey did a very good explanation on this. I will put his videos below if anybody's interested in this. Uh, but the city of London was Londonia. It was a leftover Roman outpost uh, that I believe, uh, I think, I'm not sure who it was. William the Conqueror wasn't able to penetrate the walls. And he basically came to an agreement, basically say, acknowledge me as king. You guys could, you know, keep your city, keep your jurisdiction and keep your, your trading going. And they did that. And it's a very unique space uh, in, in the city called London. Uh, even the queen herself needs permission 
to enter the city of London. Uh, of course, the city expands beyond that. They own Epping Forest. They own uh, London Bridge. Uh, they, you know, they have their own moniker. They have their own mayoral office and stuff like that. And the city of London is probably over a thousand years old. I mean, we don't actually know how old it is. Um, and there are special provisions given to the city of London because it is so ancient. Uh, but beyond that, walking around, you see great Roman influences in the buildings, in the architecture. Uh, I remember going to the Jamaican wine house and there is literally a stepping stone outside the building that's been there for about four or 500 years. I can't remember exactly. And so many people have stepped on this stone. There is literally an indentation into the stone uh, just from the wear and tear of of the traffic. And I, I, I love that kind of thing. Uh, anybody who knows me when I'm traveling, I love the old buildings. I love to touch that piece of history and, and I feel connected to, you know, all the past events that might be connected with that, which is why I love old churches and buildings. So I absolutely enjoy spending time uh, in the city of London and the city called London because there's so many great uh, monuments and old buildings. And I, I really, I get charged up uh, being around those types of surroundings. The next thing that I really enjoy is the transportation in London is is phenomenal. Uh, anybody, I, I drove for over 20 years of my life back in Trinidad and Tobago. You really do need a car in Trinidad and Tobago. It's more of a car culture than anything else. But when I got out to London, I, I didn't have to have a car at all. I mean, the buses were mostly efficient. Uh, yes, the underground may be old and slow, but I mean, again, it, it's one of the first underground systems. There's a long history of when it was nationalized and and privatized and stuff like that. They just didn't have money to really put into it, but it, it, it's getting better. Um, but nonetheless, I, I absolutely enjoyed the fact of not having a car. Uh, a car at the end of the day is, is not an asset. It's an expense. It's a liability, especially out here in the UK. The gas is expensive. Uh, you have the motor uh, MOT inspection. So every, every after a certain age of the car, you got to get it inspected. And I mean, there's just so many costs that come out uh, for drivers. So so London really has like a war on cars. And even driving into to London, you have congestion charges you've got to pay that's just gone up. And it's just very complicated. Uh, I drove in one London once with a friend of mine, and it was one of the most nerve wracking things that I had <laughs> to go through between the cameras, the speed checks, the pedestrians, the bikes and everything else. I was sweating every time I drove through London because it was just so much to look out for. And coming from Trinidad and Tobago, we don't have... You have to be a little psychic in Trinidad, but we don't have that many things to look out for. We don't really have a big cycling community and other things like that. So um, now that I've moved out of London, I might actually have to get a car, <laughs> but that's another story. I'll save that for my Essex video. And lastly, of course, uh, definitely the diversity that I've encountered out in London. Uh, as I say, I've gone to the intonation things. I've met so many people from countries that I probably would not have met, generally speaking, back in the Caribbean. Uh, lots of Russians, Italians, um, Slovakians, Romanians, Bulgarians, uh, absolutely great. Um, I've gone out to a lot of their social events, had lots of uh, different types of food and drinks and all these different types of things, uh, which I've absolutely enjoyed. Uh, anybody knows me when I travel, that's, that's kind of my thing. I like to try the local beer, whatever the national dish is, I, I like to try that as well. Uh, and being in London, if you want to try any of those types of things, you can find a place uh, to do that. And I've absolutely enjoyed it. Even the Trini food, the Trinidadian food that I've had out here has been has been really, really good. Uh, I mean, it, it can't compare to the food back in Trinidad and Tobago. But those are the top five things. I mean, there's so much I could say on this, but I don't want this video to go on too long. But those are the top five things that I absolutely enjoyed about my time living in London. Uh, as I said, I've moved out to Essex. I'm going to do a video on Essex as well. Might do a video about the five things I didn't like about London. <laughs> if you guys are interested, let me know in the comments below. Um, and be sure to like, share, and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Hit the notification button so you're alerted whenever new content is uploaded. Uh, and as always, guys, thanks for watching. Take care.